This is the ticket to have in Pittsburgh tonight. A big crowd expected for game three of a four game series as the Atlanta Braves visit and take on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Hi again, everybody, along with the man with the best tie in the ballpark, Steve Blass. I'm Tim Neverett, and uh, tonight the Pirates try for their second straight win over the Atlanta Braves. They'll do it a little bit differently with a different look at third base, but he's a right-handed bat. Russell Martin getting the start at third, but his bat has been playing lately. Absolutely. He's uh, kind of getting it going. You want to keep the hot corner hot. So Russell Martin is going to be at third base as Clint Hurdle just loads up the lineup with right-hand batters against left-hander Paul Mahalan. So we'll see how Russell handles third base and hope he keeps the bat hot. This will be his second appearance at third base this season, his 17th career appearance at third base. And Clint Hurdle feels very comfortable with him there and very comfortable with the offense as well. Over the last 11 days, the Pirates' offense has been much better than at the beginning of the season. Absolutely, yeah. Remember all the doom and gloom when the Pirates were 1-5? and five? Oh, they can't hit. They're not hitting. They'll never hit. We might as well not play these games. Well, the bats have really come alive. And when you score a lot of runs, it makes life a lot easier for everybody. The hitters feel better. The pitchers absolutely feel better. And the Pirates are on a roll with the sticks right now. It's Paul Mahalam for the Braves against James McDonald for the Pirates. As we count you down to the first pitch at PNC Park, it's Andrew McCutcheon bobblehead night here tonight. Braves and Bucks coming up. PNC Park, big start for J-Mac tonight, 1-2 and two the record, but he's 3-0 and oh against the Atlanta Braves in his career. Buddy Gonzalez lineup tonight for the Braves, B.J. Upton leading off, his brother Justin Upton in the third spot, four doubles, nine home runs, 13 runs batted in. Evan Gaddis is in the cleanup spot, then Chris Johnson moves over to first. Dan Ugla, Juan Francisco at third base, played there two nights ago. The shortstop, Vandleton Simmons, and Paul Mahalo. That's ninth against J-Mac. Your 
numbers for James McDonald presented by Chevrolet. Start number four. He was knocked around uh, eight runs given up. Only three were earned, but look beyond that. He got knocked around. He gave up eight hits also, so it wasn't just bad play in back of him. He's got to get that squared away, and you want him to get squared away early. Put up a zero in the first, put up a zero in the second, and you're kind of on your way. Well, here we go. He delivers a swinging strike to B.J. Upton. We're underway. B.J. Upton, who was ejected from the game last night, takes strike two. And that fastball, by the way, 92, 93 miles an hour. Pretty good zip on those first two deliveries. And perfect curveball. Yeah, there, there's a way to start your night. Here you go, James. That's a terrific start for James McDonald as he goes good morning, good afternoon, good night on B.J. Upton. Yep, two fastballs and then a good-looking hook down and away. Picked him right up where Wandy left off last night. That's not a bad place to pick up. That's a good neighborhood. With Jason Hayward, the right fielder, was hitting 127 to start the season. He takes a fastball strike. Now, here's a, an interesting number, Steve. The last four games, the Pirates have won when the opposition goes down 1 2 3 in the first. Okay. So keep that in mind when watching James McDonald pitch tonight. It's almost like a, a vendetta a, approach. You know, James is out there. It almost looks like he's got a score to settle from last start. On one pitch, swing and a miss. Plenty of zip on the fastball. All the fastballs have been good. They've all been upstairs. The one two is fouled back. Oh, ball and two strikes to Jason Hayward. Well, we know that James McDonald is primarily a fastball pitcher. He's a power guy. And when he is effective, the fastball has some zip on it and it's thrown in good locations. One ball, two strike pitch. Got him. Well, James McDonald comes out of the gate and strikes out the first two Atlanta Braves. Another good hook. Both fastballs finished off with curveballs, but started off with good, effective, high fastballs. Now he'll face the majors' home run leader in Justin Upton with nine. Upton, the fastest Brave to get to nine home runs in franchise history. It took him 15 games to get there. And he will take that pitch for a ball. Next fastest 17 games. Chipper Jones did it in 1998. Dale Murphy in 1985. And ball and one strike to Upton. So numbers against the Braves have been very, very good. And one and a half ERA, 3 0 record. Five runs and three starts. That'll work for you. McDonald gets a sign from Michael McHenry. Upton fouls it off and he's behind one and two so far that 92 mile an hour fastball according to the gun here in the ballpark uh, tempered with the nine, uh, 76 mile an hour curveball nice separation 92 to 76 Let's see if he goes back upstairs Upton fouls this one off the defense tonight slightly different than last night the outfield starting Marte is back out there. Tabata starts in right field. Russell Martin makes his first start as a pirate at third base. Gabby Sanchez at first with Michael McHenry the fort. Right hand hitters. Right hand hitters. Paul Maham the lefty. Loaded up with the righties in the order. And J Max strikes out the side to start the first. He's got to be feeling good right now. Braves done in order in the top half of the first inning.
Paul Mahalo. Take a look at the Toyota lineup for your Pirates tonight. Marte leading off back in there after sitting out last night. And Tabata and McCutcheon. Sanchez batting cleanup. Russell Martin playing third base, batting fifth. His bat's heating up over the last four games. Six for 14 with a home run. Walker, the switch hitter, hits six. Then McHenry, Barmas, and McDonald against the lefty, Mahalo. Starling Marte, Jose Tabata, one two at the top of the order. Paul Mahalo simply the best pitcher in the major leagues right now. The best. Three starts, he's not given up a run. Simple as that. He's striking out a batter per inning, and uh, whatever it is they're feeding Paul Mahalo, boy, uh, it's, it's agreeing with him. The diet's working. He's just really been pitching well. In fact, from the time that uh, he was getting ready to finish up his work with the Cubs when he had an one ERA in his last six starts in Chicago. Very good work with the Braves last year. Great spring training and he has just not missed a beat. And, uh, we'll see how it goes for Paul Mahalam and start number four. So Mahalam gets set to face Starling Marte. Marte a night off after two nights ago striking out five times for the first time in his career. And he will take a strike. Called making his 100th career start at PNC Park. He is the wins leader at PNC Park also with 36 victories. 0 1 pitch and Marte tries to bunt. Now he's behind nothing in two. Paul Mahalan, a lot of years here with the Pirates in this ballpark. Now that's pretty good rankings right there. 641 and a third innings pitch the most. His 100th start and he plunks starting Marte and the Pirates get the game's first base runner. And Marte might want to run here. Paul gets that breaking ball maybe toward the back foot. No nope, front foot. Gets a piece of him. You know in the big picture Paul Mahalam as you take a look at Marte at first base. And you wonder about the running game of the Pirates tonight. Not likely to see it a lot, perhaps, with the left-hand pitcher looking right at you. But Mahalam did everything here in Pittsburgh but win a lot. Pitched well. He's dependable. He's durable. And a slide step and a strike delivered to Tabata. Paul holds runners pretty well. He does have a good move to first base. And when he uses that slide step, he can get a quick delivery to the plate. And if you're Marte, you've just got to guess right against Mahalam. Hope that he's going to the plate. Yeah, that's that's the that's the approach when you're trying to steal off a lefty. Just try to pick the right time where he's already made his mind up to go to home plate. And if you guess right, you're in there easily. If you're not, you're hung out to dry. Mahalam out of Greenville, Mississippi, and Mississippi State. Still a season ticket holder for the Bulldogs football team there. Told me he doesn't go to many, if any, games, but he still has season tickets. There you go, Steve. That might match the tie you have on. Arr, you a face that looked arr. like that, your tie would go great with that. Yep. So 0 and 2 to Jose Tabata. Modest lead at first. It's inside. One ball, two strikes. We're talking about Paul's. Uh, Success. Uh, he said nothing dramatic. He says uh, he's hitting his spots, pitching better, changing speeds. And I've heard that theme from a lot of people talking about the success that he's had so far, changing speeds very, very well. And he is not afraid to come inside to right hand batters. And that's that's effective too. He uh, mentioned that in our conversation. He is very aware of having to protect the inside part of the plate which protects the outside part of the plate because he knows that people dive out to get that sinking fastball down and away so he's not afraid to come into the righties throw to first base well the way that it's gone for Mahalam he is just the fourth major league pitcher during the expansion era to win his first three games of a season all starts without allowing a run the others Louis Tiant in 1966 with the Indian his ground ball to short. Simmons to Ugla for one. Back to Johnson. That's a double play. And there are two men out. And six to four to three. Easiest pie. This one's 
Taylor made. There's that sinker outside. If you try to pull it, you roll over on it. You're going to hit a lot of ground balls. You might hit them well, but there, a lot of them are going to be right at that shortstop and that produce the double play. You've got to take that sinker and try to go the opposite way with it. Well, it's McCutcheon's night tonight, and everybody's got a bobblehead for 25,000 fans <laughs> getting the awards bobblehead tonight. There it is, All Star, Gold Glove, and he's got the silver bat. Indicating the Silver Slugger Award. A nice piece of memorabilia. Everybody else, everybody's also have a, they have a coat, a very heavy coat tonight. It's cold. Well, two down and coming up at the end of this inning, it will be a tribute to the uh, victims of the Boston Marathon with the, a Red Sox tradition. That's coming up. This one is tapped foul. Nothing in two to McCutcheon. And we're going to show you what that's all about. Right after the very next commercial break. The end of this half inning. We saw an indication of Paul Mahomes separation from that 89 90 mile an hour fastball down to 65 on the curve. McCutcheon pops it up to center field and B.J. Upton will get underneath it. And the Pirates are done in the first. No score after one at PNC Park. Proceeds from the Pirates Charities in Park 50-50 raffle tonight will be donated to OneFundBoston.org, which is raising funds to assist those families most affected by the events that occurred at the Boston Marathon. A Red Sox tradition, Sweet Caroline. Fourth for the Braves, catcher number 24, Evan Gaddis. And when I heard... Flags remaining at half staff here, PNC Park. In remembrance of those victims and the injured. Top of the second inning, Evan Gaddis, the catcher tonight, started at first base last night. And hit a pinch hit home run in game one of this series, his first ever in his career. Takes a strike from McDonald. McDonald came out of the gates red hot, striking out Upton, Hayward, and Upton. Sounds like a law firm. Well, they're an outfield firm. They've led the Braves, especially Justin Upton, to the best start in baseball this year, 13 and 3. One thing J Mac needs to do keep this team in the ballpark. The Braves are 13 and 0 this year in games in which they hit a home run. That's a trend. <laughs> and the only way you've been able to beat the Braves so far this year is to shut them out. The three losses. Have been shutouts. Two and one to Gattis. Hit him. And J Max saying that he left his arm out. It looked like he might have had his arm out over the plate, whether it was intentional or not. It's, uh, to the umpire, but man on first, regardless. Uh, he, he had his arm out, but he's also protecting his head. Well, 
Well, the Braves with their first base runner. And Chris Johnson. First baseman tonight at the plate. And he hits this one well to right center field on the run and the notch is Marte. He cannot make the catch. Gaddis will stop at third and then with a double is Johnson. Marte and he got there. He got there, couldn't haul it in. I don't know whether he got nervous right around that uh, 410 sign at the last possible second, but he did a great job of getting there. And we'll have a chance when we get it up close to see how close. Yeah, he just didn't didn't finish the extension almost like uh, like he was starting to pull up with the body and pull back with the glove a little bit. It would have been a great play, but all of a sudden now it's it's a whole different inning than the first. Nobody out second and third for Dan Ugla. Gabby Sanchez playing the right side of the infield by himself and he's in almost on the grass. Walker playing up the middle for Ugla who takes a ball. So the table is set for Ugla and the Braves here in the second inning. One oh pitch from McDonald. And Ugla will take a strike. One ball and one strike to Dan Ugla. You know, I don't want to seem premature, Tim, but it almost looked even to the first batter, Gaddis, before he hit him. James came out extremely aggressive in the first, and it, it, it just doesn't look quite as smooth here in the second. And, I, and I, I'll hedge my bet here. And the, the curve is missing now, oh, and it can happen very quickly. But everything he threw in the first inning looked aggressive, and strong, and confident. And uh, now in the second inning, uh, not off to a good start. Put it that way. Two ball, one strike pitch. Now it's three and one. And even though that missed, it didn't look like it had the same kind of release. Remember the, the first inning fastball had that good jump and that good zip. Out of his hand like it was. Uh, jumped. Yep. Yeah, jumped right out. But now it's a three one count and J Mac in danger of loading the bases. The second inning was his bugaboo last time out. Good breaking ball there. Good, good call by Michael McHenry not giving into the fastball, throwing the curve. And James delivering it to get the count full. Not the best curve, but you don't have to have the best curve when the guy's looking for something else. He's looking for the fastball. It's a curveball down kind of the middle of strike zone, but okay because it was something unexpected. And the payoff pitch is low, and the bases are full of Braves with nobody out. See these fastball. Now maybe it's a two seamer. Maybe he's trying to throw it differently, but that good live fastball in the first inning had a lot of finish. Strikes out the side in the first, loads him up with nobody out in the second. And Juan Francisco, who didn't play last night, takes his 318 average to the plate, three home runs, seven runs batted in for Atlanta. Pirates will definitely trade two for one if they can get two, a double play here. A double, how about just going one, two, three? That, that's, that's the fastball that we saw a lot of in the first inning, kind of pouring it in. It's just kind of riding into home plate. There have been several that look different. Now, if it's a two seam fastball, that explains it. But if it doesn't, then it's a little different delivery. Okay. Huh? All of a sudden, this looks like James in the first. Downstairs nicely. Oh, two pitch. And hanging on to it is McHenry. And Francisco strikes out. So, if you're looking ahead and you're a glass half full person, now you get a chance to get out of the inning with a ground ball playable to one of the infielders. And that's uh, James McDonald's new best friend, Michael McHenry, holding on to that ball. That is huge. You can throw that grave curve ball, you can just get a piece, and it just fouled off and it's wasted. But Michael saved it. Four strikeouts for 
James McDonald. All four outs that he has recorded in the ball game so far have been by way of strikeout. If I'm not mistaken, all four swinging curveballs. Well, with the exception of B.J. Upton, the leadoff of the game, he took a curveball. Yeah, yeah. But all yeah. curveballs, yeah. nonetheless. And now he's got a chance to do a Houdini, get out of this thing. And, and get a very uh, non uh, productive out, and then you go to the pitcher, Paul Mahalan. But you've got to throw strikes here. This is critical. You're down in the part of the batting order where you do have a chance to wiggle out of it. Under the watchful eye. Skipper and the pitching coach. Simmons has not grounded into a double play yet this year. And uh, J-Mac goes 3-0 and to the number eight hitter with the bases loaded. As you mentioned, he's the guy you got to throw strikes to in this case. And Donald, nowhere to put him right, right. now. And he's got to come back with a fastball now, assuming that Simmons is taking. Throw the ball over the over the middle of the plate. And he missed. So command a bit of an issue here in the second inning for McDonald as he walks in the game's first run. It's one nothing Atlanta. So the man he hit with a pitch, Evan Gaddis, comes across to score. So. That's the third free pass of the inning. He's walked to hit a man and allowed the double to Johnson. And the bases remain loaded for Paul Mahalo. And for Paul, he'll just probably be happy to take a strike out here knowing Paul rather than hit it to a double play. Well, knowing Paul also, he'll want to swing the bat and uh, help himself. But, uh, let's hope he can find a, a pirate infielder. Here's the first one. Well, one thing Paul's happy with, regardless of the outcome of his at bats, as long as he gets four of them in a game, he feels he's had a good night. Yep. Any starter will, will agree with that. Nothing in one to Paul Mahalo. Number third is Johnson. And it's 0 and 2. And Ugla's over at second base. Hamilton Simmons, a runner at first. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier before the game. James has had a, a, a problem sometimes with getting in a jam. And not giving up just one or two, but getting into those four and five run innings. Here's where you want to make a pitch. Okay, you've given up one. Boy, if you can uh, limit to one or even two. And Paul takes strike three. Drops that curveball in again. Five strikeouts for McDonald. Yep. And again, see where the location was. It doesn't have to be great. You've got somebody looking for a different pitch. They're going to lock up. They'll freeze. They'll flinch. And you can get that call. Now, one more step to go, and it's not going to be easy. But again, working out of jams. Every pitcher gets in jams. Minimize your damage. Minimize. You're going to get hurt a little bit. Just don't get hurt a lot. Upton's got to be hungry. He has struck out his last two at-bats, going back to the seventh inning last night when he struck out looking. Then... Got ejected after arguing with home plate umpire Sam Holbrook. Struck okay. out looking to start the game here tonight. And kind of escalated, uh, did Holbrook with him, kind of shooing away, dismissing him, and that's when it really, really went off the charts. No one swing and a miss. See, there's that 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 fastball. The 93 miles an hour, and he's been uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde in this inning. We've seen his velocity over the last couple of starts not really get up there on 93 all that often. No balls, two strikes to BJ Upton. Strike three. Great James job. McDonald has struck out six. He gets out of the inning, giving up just one.
brought to you by Toyota. Now's the time to go places with Toyota. Visit buyatoyota.com for special offers. And by PNC for the achiever in you. Let's go, Bucks. Well, it's a nice night, a little chilly in Atlanta with a gift run, one nothing. So we go to the bottom half of the second inning, but considering the jam that James McDonald got himself in, bases loaded, nobody out, giving up just the one run, seemed to be uh, the best case scenario considering, and he ended up striking out the side both the first and the second. Gabby Sanchez will lead off for the Bucks facing Mahomes. Yeah, that was that was wild. I mean, he, he really pitched exceptionally well and exceptionally bad. <laughs> but uh, he minimized the damage. That's that's what pitching is all about. You're going to have those struggling innings. It might not be that bizarre all the time, but he got the job done. Just a single run. Two balls, no strikes to Gabby Sanchez. Gabby's been coming off the bench and doing a pretty good job as a pinch hitter. And he knows that with the number of right handers the Pirates have faced recently, he was going to be coming off the bench. Garrett Jones, a left handed bat, setting this one out tonight. Sanchez fouls it off two and two. I'm talking to Gabby the other day in the clubhouse, he was looking forward to this one because he knew he'd be starting against the lefty. Yep. Just uh, one of those things. It's a long season. You want to play every single night, but there are a number of interchangeable parts in this pirate lineup, depending on who's throwing the baseball. Two and two. He has gone two for two with three runs batted in in the last two games he's appeared in. Hits this one well to left field, but it's going to hang up. And Justin Upton under it for out number one. Yeah, I'd like to uh, get to the umpires. So. Uh, uh, as early as we can because the home plate umpire sets a tone for both of these starting pitchers Chris Conroy working the plate and the crew chief Sam Holbrook over at third base and uh, we say it all the time the pitchers have to learn the strike zone of the home plate umpire not the other way around and Mahalam depends on finding that out early for what he can do with that sinker down the way to the right hand batters that gets a good bit of the plate but he'll turn that ball over and run that ball out away toward the first base dugout Get the guys to chase, and he's got to find out if he's going to get those calls from whoever's working the plate in blue. Russell Martin takes strike two. Martin uh, at third base tonight. He's got a four game hitting streak. He is six for his last 14. His first home run of the season Thursday night. 0 2 pitch. And that one is to Francisco at third. Martin is out two gone for the Pirates in their half of the second inning. Make sure to join us Friday May 31st for the second annual allergy awareness night at PNC Park sponsored by Milan Specialty LP. Enjoy a safe night out in a peanut controlled section. Tickets are $20 with $10 loaded value on each ticket. Good for food and beverage. For tickets visit pirates.com slash allergy awareness. Peanut awareness and peanuts and popcorn sold at ballparks. It's kind of a tough time to go. People who are unfortunate and have that that peanut allergy. But uh, have a so no peanuts in that section. No. Nope. Nice comfortable night. Four one to Neil Walker. Well, there's uh, that's just not right. That's Pooh Bear right there. Winnie the Pooh doesn't know what to do. It's got to be really cold over now, there for you, Bob to put that on. If you can get a honey jar stuck on his nose, now you got the whole deal going. Bob just came out of the hundred acre wood. Yep. There's uh, Christopher Robin. An outfit. <laughs> One ball and two strikes. No one two for three. That is first triple of the season last night. I think Bob's just a trendsetter with his headwear. I think he is. He's setting the tone for sure. Mahomes one two is chased by Walker and the Pirates are gone in order in the second. Mahalam still the only pitcher in baseball who has yet to give up a run.
We saw a spectacular pitching performance all around by the Pittsburgh Pirates. And it was also a rare feat that they accomplished last night, facing 27 batters in a non-inning, non-perfect game situation. In fact, it's the third time in Pirates history we've seen it. And since 1921, just 56 Major League games have been like last night, where a team does not get a perfect game and face a minimum, minimum amount of batters. Now, mind you, these are regular season stats. There have been 18 perfect games in the Major League since 1921. But uh, a lot of credit goes to Wandy Rodriguez and Russell Martin, Tim, uh, or before the ball game today, just talked about Wandy and the way he was able to work the play both sides. And Clint Hurdle put it even a little bit better and said that was a statement by Wandy Rodriguez with the way he pitched last night. Mark Melanson added that he thought it was cool, and he woke up this morning and said, I'm surprised more people aren't paying attention to what they did last night. Yeah. I think a lot of us might be. Yeah. yeah, so rare. That is unbelievably rare. It's just, just this side of a no-hitter, really. Uh, the last time, spectacular. The last time uh, in 1982, John Candelaria was the starting pitcher, and it was also against the Atlanta Braves. Four hit shutout, three double plays, and a caught stealing. And uh, I didn't know also 1966. July 1st. I would have had a chance to watch that. Let me assure you it wasn't me pitching. You would have remembered. Yeah. Your memory is pretty good about those things. Oh, yeah. Wandy Rodriguez was spectacular. I mean, he, it was a clinic. It was absolutely brilliant. I don't know if he broke a sweat. He was just in a rocking chair. And uh, I thought I did a very good job of holding my tongue when he didn't come out for the eighth. I've learned my lesson. This one's rip foul. I asked Clint Hurdle about that today. Did he consider having Wandy come out for the eighth because his spot in the batting order would have come up first in the bottom of the eighth inning? He said, no, absolutely not. It was going to be seven innings, and the hamstring had to get heated up, he said, during the game. So sometime during the inning breaks, I wanted. Uh, he still had to take heat on the hamstring, so not wanting to push it too much farther. That was what the skipper told me this afternoon. I've, uh, I've learned my lesson uh, too many times. I've said something and gone off about that, and I go down in the dugout or in the coach's office or the manager's office, and I'll get the reasoning. So, uh, yeah, he's the manager. There's more going on in the dugout than I'm aware of. I know that. Sanchez will record the out. That's the first out for the Braves. That is not a strikeout. On the next Sunday Night Classics, WVU's Jared West sinks a buzzer beater in the 98 NCAA tournament to defeat Cincinnati and send the Mountaineers to the Sweet 16. Here the story retold by Bob Huggins, Jared West, Brent Solheim, and Tony Caridi while you relive this bracket-busting classic. Sunday Night Classics, Boise buzzer beater tomorrow at 8 on Route Sports. A couple of hats to match the one that Bob's got on tonight over in radio. Justin Upton, he struck out swinging in the first time. By the way, just to finish that up, I, I held my tongue, but I did I did go a little crazy on the post-game radio show. I, I was just rooting for Wandy and so much because he was just doing an unbelievable job. I, I would love to see him do the whole thing, but that's a, that's a good bit of the part of the past anymore. But I've never seen as effortless as seven shutout innings as Wandy Rodriguez had last night. I mean, he was just perfect example that you don't have to throw 150 miles an hour to put on a clinic. Well, you know, and, and as times have, have changed, I mean, there's fewer and fewer complete games. There still are complete games out there. Oh, yes, to there be are. Had, but yes, there there's are. just fewer and fewer of them than there, than there used to be, obviously, back when you were pitching, because your goal was to pitch nine innings. Some of these guys today, their goal is to pitch six and seven. And up to well, the they, walks. They've been trained that way, too. It's not all their fault. They've been trained and developed that way. And That's why you have bullpens. <laughs> you yeah, can well, use them. <laughs> well, we had them, too. We had bullpens, too. <laughs> I will defend going nine innings till the day I die. But I, I know times have changed, so yeah. don't get me going. It's all right. But, uh, it was fun to watch last night. Well, really let's see somebody this year is going to go nine. Maybe a few guys will do it. Well, it's happening around the major leagues. Evan Gaddis, the batter with one on and one out. Atlanta with a one nothing lead. Strike one to Gaddis. That's a court. That's a court gesture right there. Some nice headwear around the ballpark today. And now just 
as a point of uh, as an editorial. Last night you and I were offered the Winnie the Pooh hat and there's another one over there. It's, it's uh, Elmo. Man mm -hmm. from Sesame Street. But uh, we decided we were going to be professionals in, last in night and not, and not wear them. Best interest of professionalism. Yeah. Those are very serious up here doing a major league game. So and I did not want to be a, a distraction. Yep. Hope it gets warm soon so I can take my Elmer Fudd hat home from my locker <laughs> over there. The uh, fluorescent hunting cap. One and one to Evan Gaddis. Now what do we got for James in the third? Good start with the ground ball, but then the free pass. He's not going to throw the pitch. Well, th this is a good time maybe to address that subject too, because uh, against the stolen base, only nine attempts so far in the first 16 games. I I got to believe that's less certainly than uh, last year, especially toward the end of the year when everybody's running. And uh, just one against Michael McHenry because he's not been catching much. And the throw over, and that's a pretty close play, but Upton got his hand back in. One and one, the count to Gaddis. Cat and mouse between Upton and McDonald this inning. Two balls and a strike. You don't want to get distracted. Either. You know that play at first base, Gabby Sanchez over there too. He he really doesn't know what's happening with the runner as he takes the, the ball from the pitcher. So it's just a swipe tag and hope you're getting at the right place. And you, you want to be close to the base because obviously the guy has to come to the base with either the hand or the foot or whatever. Uh, you hope to get lucky with the tag application. Pops it up. Shallow center. Here comes McCutcheon. That's a major pop up. And the Gold Glover's got it. Two men out for the Braves in the top of the third. Well, big power guys hit those high towering, towering pop flies. They have that big swing, and you know, they hit the ball a long way. Sometimes they hit a long way straight up in the air. J Max at 51 pitches, and he's in the top of the third inning. Cruising on the Allegheny tonight. Definitely jacket weather. Wandy wound up with 82 pitches in seven innings. Chris Johnson takes a strike. Johnson put it in the notch in left center field by the 410 side. Marte caught up to it. Ball went off the end of his glove. Johnson got a double, his 75th career double. Is behind the bag, the flip to Walker. They go the short way to get the force out. Nothing across for the Braves. We'll head to the bottom of the third inning. One nothing Atlanta.
reason to be better. And by Day Automotive. We're going to make your day. Let's go Bucks. It's a 1-0 Braves lead. Bottom of the third inning. Michael McHenry will lead off against Paul Mahalam. Paul cruising through the first two innings with one strikeout. Helped out by a double play. And McHenry belts it to left field but right at Upton. One pitch and one out in the Pirates third. Well, the Parrot. you got to give him props here. Yeah, he tries to get it up here. But you know what? That's the closest he's coming just a while. It hit the facade oh, just over man. our heads. I was right there with it. Yeah. That's about as close as he's come in, uh, in years. Yep. Really good job. He's, he's, uh, he's trying. He's trying. But he's a parrot. And he's green. Yeah, he's dressed up as McCluckin tonight. That's his Andrew McCutcheon outfit. Andrew being honored. That kind of thing. See? Silver Slugger. Player's Choice. Bobblehead awards. You got the silver bat on the uh, bobblehead down to detail. Our day automotive key matchup of the day from Barmus. He's had a lot of success against Mahalam. 15 out of 34, six extra base hits, two home runs. And he grounds it to Andrelton Simmons, who throws him out, two down. And what you have to be careful with with, with a guy like Paul Mahalam, a guy that doesn't throw hard, throwing a lot of strikes, throwing it where he wants to. He gets you in a routine and it kind of lulls you to sleep. You look up and it's the seventh inning and you haven't done much. You can get on that roll. Just 28 pitches for Mahalam. Uh, that's 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 nothing compared to Wandy last night. Or, 21 of those 28 strikes. And you're right. I mean, nothing compared to Mahalam. I mean, nothing compared to Wandy last night. He just moved the ball in the strike zone without getting in the hitting zone. See, there's a hitting zone within the strike zone, but he kept out of that zone. It's a zone within a zone. Well, it took Paul Mahalam just six pitches to retire the Pirates in the third inning. The world had been focused on Boston since the tragic events that took place Monday at the Boston Marathon and the pursuit, obviously, last night of the suspect. The crowd at the TD Garden sang the national anthem as they had done several nights before, perhaps even a few decibels louder as the Bruins hosted the Penguins. And at Fenway Park, the Red Sox hosting the Royals. First responders were honored. David Ortiz among those who spoke to the crowd as part of a 20-minute pregame ceremony. Tim and Steve, quite a powerful day in Beantown. And the Red Sox actually changed their uniforms today. Instead of saying Red Sox across the front of their home whites, they put the city name instead, Boston. Boston. Boston strong. Yep. And our, our thoughts continue to go in that direction. Yep. Folks showing uh, 
showing their support in different ways here tonight. Yep. So many people in Boston, obviously, but a lot of people that grew up or had ties there, uh, very much in, involved in, in, in that. So Dan Ugla will start the top of the fourth inning with a swinging strike. Donald has six strikeouts already. Gave up the one run in the second inning where he really got himself in trouble. Hitting Evan Gaddis with a pitch and giving up a deep double. Walking the bases loaded when he walked Ugla. There was a strike, nothing in two. And considering the bases were loaded and nobody out, and he gave up just one run, that was getting off the hook cheap. So 0 oh and 2. That's up high. And Ugla ducking out of the way. Braves and Buccos wrap up this four game set tomorrow afternoon. Chris Medlin, a right hander for the Atlanta Braves, and Jonathan Sanchez, Pirates lefty, goes. 1 2. And then the Bucks out on the road for 10 days. Philadelphia, St. Louis, and Milwaukee. And then the month of April's done. Well, it must be uh, going to be good weather then. The Bucks are leaving town. <laughs> yeah, that's a good sign. <laughs> Every time the Bucks go away, the weather gets better. Not last time. Slowly hit ground in a short. Barmas with a leaping throw gets ugly. One man out. You can tweet the booth at Root Sports Pit hashtag Bucks Booth. You can send us all of your Pirates questions and comments and observations. And guys in the trunk will take a look at them. We've got them up here in the booth as well. And Steve has been just pouring over the tweets coming in here mm -hmm. tonight. Yep, got a pretty good handle on them. Yep. Still a couple of belated birthday wishes that have come in for you. The gifts have been a little bit delayed, but the, uh, the well wishing uh, folks, that's appreciated. I saw some cupcakes around here. You yep. got some cupcakes? I did. Yep. The uh, Waleskis uh, sent them up. They sent up a lot of goodies. It's appreciated. Our friends down the right field line Rose and her husband. Francisco for one he's got a 1 1 count on him. I hadn't intended to share them but uh, it seemed to happen while I was downstairs. The curveball again. Well everybody was waiting for you to leave. Yeah. It happens a lot. They knew that. If they asked what the answer would be if you were here so they waited for you to leave and then. Took liberties with your cupcakes. One two to Francisco. J Mac gets strikeout number seven. You got a fastball strikeout here. Alert the media. Changed it up. He has been effective with that fastball upstairs. A lot of swings and misses. It's been uh, very valuable helping set up that curveball downstairs for all the other strikeouts. Two gone. Nobody on and Anderton Simmons stood up and he takes a strike. Now that's that curveball that starts off off the inside corner and would come back in and pick up the inside corner. That's not by intent. Usually you want your breaking balls to right hand batters to be out away. One one to Simmons. That curveball that uh, he threw for the first pitch is the one you want two strikes to a lefty because the lefty will give up on it thinking it's going to stay outside. This one's popped up right to Gabby Sanchez. He'll handle it. It's a good inning for J Mac as he gets a strikeout and retires the Braves in order. Head to the bottom of the fourth. Braves one. Pirates nothing.
League leaders stat. National League leaders in whip, walks and hits, sprintings, pitch. Wandy Rodriguez right at the top of the list now after last night's performance. And Matt Harvey, who outdueled Steven Strasburg of the Nationals yesterday. Harvey with four wins. And there's Paul Mahalam. He's fourth on the list at 079. Barrel Automotive, we're driven to be better. And another thing about Paul Mahalam in his first three starts, five free passes. So the control has been excellent. He, like Wandy, uh, just filling up the zone with strikes. New uh, second baseman, Ugla's gone. Romero Pena takes over. I'm trying to get some update on why Dan Ugla has left the game early. Romero Pena, he is a switch hitter, came in late as part of a double switch in last night's game. So Pena in at second base now for the Atlanta Braves. Sterling Marte hit by a pitch first time up. Well, if you're a manager and you've got a young player like Marte, strikes out five times in the game, well, what do you tell him? Kent said he didn't tell him anything after the game, but the next day when he came in, which was yesterday, he reminded him that uh, he also had done that in the big league, struck out five times, and he said, but you're striking out five times in the big leagues. It's, it's not like you're striking out five times somewhere else. That's a pretty good spin on it, isn't it? Yeah, he's got a, well, Clint has a, a gift in that regard. <laughs> wow, how about that? Maybe 61 miles an hour. That's the old dead fish right there. Yeah. I used to call it the, the, uh, the slop drop, dead fish. Well, 61 is slow. I mean, he, yeah, that's I think the, the slowest we saw him when he was a pirate was about 66, 65. That's a, a gravity curveball. Further it goes, the more it goes down just by gravity. One two pitch. And this one's fouled off. I was told by one of the Braves broadcasters earlier today that he's had it as low as 58 miles an hour this season. 58. <laughs> I mean, you may as well put a stamp on the ball that says, go ahead, try to hit me. <laughs> a lot of separation there. And Marte's got to realize, five strike, yeah, hey, part of the dance, that's that's going to happen. And this is a drop third strike, Gaddis throws down. He still hasn't Marte put the ball in play. One man is out. Time to come into the plate. MLB.tv celebrating 11 years. Join the millions of fans and subscribe today. Watch every out of market game live online on your favorite mobile and connected devices in HD quality with MLB.TV Premium. Visit MLB.TV today. MLB.TV baseball everywhere. And it is baseball everywhere, literally. You know, going back to Marte, too, we're in an era where everybody makes judgments instantly. Marte got off to a good start. Oh, he's going to be the next Comeni. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. He is a very, very young major leaguer. Easy ground ball to short for the second out. And Marte, even even the play in, in left center field. Now, as he's around more, he'll he'll finish that play off. He'll make that catch. He'll have better at bats. I mean, it's, it's part of uh, growing up in the big leagues. He's... he's Literally a baby in the big league, so he's going to have those kind of nights. Andrew McCutcheon, his parents are here from Florida. His sister's here. Ran to them earlier, and Neil Walker presenting the award, the MLB Players Association Players Choice for Outstanding National League Player Award in 2012. And it's also Andrew McCutcheon bobblehead night tonight. First of two bobbleheads the Pirates will give out. A.J. Burnett the other. That's later in the season. Laid off that outside sinking fastball. And McCutcheon drills at the center field. Upton's going to watch it go off the wall. And Andrew McCutcheon burns into second base with a two-out double. Well, we were talking about this last night. B.J. Upton plays as shallow a center fielder as anybody. Uh, and he can go back and get the ball. Now he's going to get burned every once in a while, and he just got burned there. But the percentage of the time, he's going to run a lot of shots over his head, and he's going to run them down and make the catch. Andrew just put too much of a charge into this ball. The ball had a lot of carry on it. And B.J. Epton knows that. He's a very good center fielder. No, see, I, I love watching him run, especially when he just turns on the Jets. It's like a vapor trail going around the bases. Gabby Sanchez, 
RBI chance here against Mahalam again. Remember, Mahalam has not given up a run this season. He's the only pitcher remaining in Major League Baseball to not have given up a run. Yep. He's, well, that makes him the best pitcher, best pitcher in the game. Right now he is. Again, discipline laying off that that teaser on the outside corner. That's clear. shades of Tom Glavin, right. by the way. And just to, to clarify, starting pitchers. I mean, there are relief pitchers out there who pitch one, two innings, but as a starter, the only starter in the big leagues hasn't given up a run. But McCutcheon could change that. There he goes for third base. Gabby takes, and McCutcheon goes in standing with his sixth stolen base of the year. Yeah, you, you don't gain a lot. You know, we all know that there's wild pitches in there as where you can score. So if, if they're going to give it to you, and right there, he sees the second baseman give ground. The minute he sees that, he knows he's got a shot. If he wants to take it. You got to be sure, and he was very sure. What you want to do, get this run in, get even with Mahalan because he, he, he can get on a roll. He's on kind of a roll now for that double where he's just getting real comfortable outs. So get this one in. Sanchez in the air to right center. BJ Upton has a beat on. And then the Pirates will leave a man at third base. No runs, a hit a man left on to the fifth. One nothing Braves. The contest is designed to increase breast cancer awareness while raising funds to support breast cancer research. All men and women 18 and older are encouraged to submit stories about how they or someone they know are going to bat against breast cancer. For more information, go to honorarybatgirl.com by Monday, April 22nd to share your story and to nominate a Pirates Honorary Batgirl. Will head into the seats for the final ball and a strike. Nothing in two to Paul Mahalo. Russell Martin given a chase. Remember, Russell wanted to play in the field in the World Baseball Classic. It was a lot of time. He wanted to play short. He wanted to play short. Told me he hadn't played short since he was a teenager in a real game. But uh, here he is playing pretty close to short in a real game. And there is. Strikeout number eight for McDonald. Perhaps another curveball. That was something that uh, was never going to be hittable out of the strike zone. But rack it up, number eight. And as Paul Maham is a pitcher, you can never argue with the umpire nope. about whether you went around or not. The umpire needs to be your friend all night long. BJ Upton has struck out. Twice, once looking and once swinging. Strike one on him. Got thrown out last night, and I didn't think he would have gotten thrown out if there wasn't a little gesture from the umpire. So it did escalate both ways. He was arguing the call, and then Sam Holbrook 
Uh, gave him the, wood, the kind of dismissal, the hand wave, and that's when it got escalated. Drilled to left field, Marte to the wall, and he makes the catch. Starling Marte taking one away. Yep, and the ball had a lot of height, so Starling could get back there and find out where he was on the track, how near he was to the wall. So he's measuring where he is now. He's got a beat. He's locked in. And, yep, let's reach up and take it away from that young man. That's the, the gift of height when you're in that kind of situation. If they hit a line drive, and you don't have as much time, you can botch it up. But uh, J-Max certainly happy about that one. That really had a chance, and it was out of here if he doesn't catch it. He's going to reach up over the fence. The young man's got a beat on it. Well, he doesn't have a beat on. He's got the glove there. <laughs> Keep your eyes open there, little guy. <laughs> he closed his eyes tight when he saw how close that ball was getting. Nope. Uh, he's a little disappointed. Well, James gets a mulligan. So how'd that guy take that ball away from me? Yep. Brought my glove for a reason. It's a big left field here at PNC Park. Action on the other side by B.J. Upton. Oh. Yep, still got it. Overthrowing on the fastball from James there, but he's got two outs here in the top of the fifth inning. And Hayward walks with two down. Walk number four. Wow. Getting hungry, Steve? Always. Not a bad place to wait in line. Cold nights need fuel. Get one of those Angus burgers at that stand. Mm. Two outs, just a one nothing lead at this point. Paul Mahalo's been dealing. Jay Mack had a blemish in the second inning. He has struck out eight through the first four and two thirds innings. Hayward has one stolen base. And up front is Justin Upton. Boy. McDonald has really thrown some nice curveballs tonight and some good live fastballs. It's just uh, consistent. He's struck out eight, walked four. But he has kept the Pirates in this ballgame. And two to Justin Upton. Good hook on the first pitch delivered. Thank you, sir. May I have another? So they gave him another one. Now it's 0 and 2. One on, two out. Hayward, the runner at first base. James McDonald, ready for the 0 2, gets the sign from McHenry. Almost got him reaching. Another breaking ball. Well, he's throwing three off speed pitches. Can he come upstairs with that good live fastball again? Let's see what Michael McHenry shows us behind the plate. Here it comes. Number one. I'll go to first instead. Here's the flip over to first. Curveballs tonight in 79 pitches, 52% fastballs, 48% of his pitches tonight, a bit of the off speed variety. To right field, Tabata backing up. And he makes the leaping catch. Pretty good catch by Tabata, but Starling Marte has had the catch of the game so far, robbing BJ Upton of a home run. 1 0 Braves.
Braves team with a hit apiece, but the Braves with a run. That's the difference so far as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Get ready for another Bucks and Pucks night Monday when the Pens and Pirates play at the same time. You can see the Penguins battle the Senators starting at 7 o'clock on our main channel and a special Root Sports production of your Pirates against the Phillies at 7 o'clock on MLB Network. Visit RootSports.com for a channel lineup and more information. Holland deals ball one to Russell Martin. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The horse is a horse, of course, of course. Is that to the horse that uh, wound up in that producer's bed in the Godfather movie? <laughs> they cut his head off? <laughs> if so, they reattached it. Two and one now to Martin. Here we go. Now it's time to get at least one point. Get even with Paul Mahalam. Don't 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 let this get down into the seventh inning. So uh, do some damage here. Get on the board. Somebody get on the board against Paul. Yeah. Nobody has yet. So the Kenny Malkin sweater there. It's a bucks and pucks today too. The Penguins winning again 3-2 over the Bruins. They, they win all the time. That is a one strong hockey team. They like the old. Uh, Soviet Red Army team right now, the way they are chugging along. Bruins on the wrong end of a 3 2 score as far as they're concerned, but the Penguins keep on rolling. It's amazing. Three and two. Paul Mulholland spent seven years as a pirate. A 53 and 55 record with Pittsburgh. Former first round draft choice in 2003. He was the eighth overall pick out of Mississippi State. And a walk to Russell Martin and the Pirates with a leadoff man aboard. Dead men tail no tails. <laughs> Santa. Is he borrowing your outfit again, Steve? That guy's a man for all seasons. He's good to go for the, the black and gold. Now Santa is a Pirates fan. Yeah, you, get, you didn't know. You get to get him spray painted for the latter part of November. He's ready for Christmas. Walker with a nice looking bunt. And Walker safe at first base. Pena never touched the bag. And the Pirates now with something going. Setting up shot first and second. Nobody out. That was absolutely a perfecta. A perfecta. This ball's deadened. He's on the run. And Pena gets over there a little bit late. And that caught everybody off guard. And you can't drop it down any better than that. You cannot do it any better than that. Also, Martin liked it. Liking it. Liking being at second base with nobody out. And now Mahalam. Heading in the same direction that James McDonald did in the second inning as the Pirates get something going down toward the bottom of their batting order. And the fourth. Michael McKenna with two home runs on the season. 33 average. The Braves not expecting any butt here with the Pirates down at the bottom, the bottom of the batting order. Well, again, uh, Barmas has those good numbers against Mahalam. Coming two to McHenry. McHenry had two home runs against Cincinnati and a come from behind win on Sunday. Pirates were down in that game and McHenry's offense, along with Starling Marte, who also hit a home run in that one, hoped to win it. Most exciting comeback of the young season. Nothing and two. Outside the discipline there, Paul trying to get him uh, teasing him out there, try to get that rollover ground ball to third. Michael would try to pull it. You almost got to expect at some point you're going to get that fastball on the outside, out, outer side of the plate. And if you do, try to go with it. It was again. It, it's it's on. Well, Paul was like this before he went to Atlanta, but. Remember when you used to see Tom Glavin? He would massage that outside part of the plate to right hand batters. And he would test the umpire, too. He'd, he'd throw it on the corner. 
and if he got a call, then he'd move it out an inch and see if he'd still get the call. And as long as they kept calling, he kept moving kept out. Moving it out, yeah. yeah. And that's a smart pitcher. Oh, my. McHenry doesn't agree. And he's rung up by Paul Nart, the first base umpire. Let's Let's see. Side. Very <laughs> close. Yeah, and, and he's trying to get the hands out in front to leave the bat back so he doesn't commit that wrist turn turnover. He accomplished that, but they said even though he was kind of stiff wristed, he still went out far enough. So Clint Barmas at the plate. He's 0 for 1. He's got 799 career hits. Still looking for that 800. He has had good success against Mahalam in his career. Could use some right here. Rounded it out to short his first time up. I think the burning question is this the same Mahalam that we saw for a long time? He's not pitching like that. 41 batting average coming into the game tonight against Mahal. 15 out of 34. And follows this one off and it's quickly 0 and 2. This, and this is what Wandy did last night. You know, in that old theory, you know, you don't swing at the first pitch. Well, against guys like Paul Mahal and Wandy last night, if you don't swing at the first pitch, you're going to be behind, be behind 0 and 1. And that puts you in a hole. So if you see something you like on the first pitch, you got to take a whack at it. Because uh, these guys know what they're doing, they get, they get on these rolls. Two pitch to Barmas will wait as Mahalam turns and looks at Martin at second base. That's just to let him know he's aware of him. He hadn't forgotten him. We're talking about Mahalam being a smart pitcher. He's learned it over time. This is his 221st career appearance. 220th start. His 15th start for the Braves. Remember, he came over at the deadline as a member of the Cubs last year. Cubs and Braves were dealing players at the end of July last season. Mahalam in the mix. And the third base, and that is a foul ball. And, and Paul has that kind of tight, quick delivery. When he comes from the set, it's, it's a quick move. It's a quick break of the hands and a quick move in. And so it might fool you into thinking you've got to, he's, he, because he's quick, you've got to be quick. And if you fall into that trap, you're going to start your swing early and you're out in front again. He's quick. From the set position. Quick release. So if he's quick and pulls the string, he'll be in trouble. And now people are booing in here, but they're they're booing Paul, but he's doing the right thing. He's got he's got to just keep Martin as tight as he can at second base in case of a base hit. That stuff he's doing might hold him a third. Barnes down on strikes, chased the pitch, that was out of the zone. And Barmas having some struggles right now. This will bring up James McDonald. So the Pirates at first and second, nobody out. Cameron rung up on a check swing. Barmas now chases a pitch. And two strikeouts in a row from Mahalam. Now he'll face McDonald. And James can help his own cause here, but it's going to be tough. It, it is tough because here's a guy that's not giving up any runs. He, he is really on his game. Donald's got one base hit and that came on a wheel play recognized the wheel play pulled the bat back and took a full swing and drove it up the middle of his early starts and Mahalam in front nothing in two. I'm looking at a pitcher who is really really on his game right now. No, Paul trying to air it out and get that velocity up there. Impress the gun people. Measuring the speed. So the one two on the way. And that's called strike three. And the Pirates have two on and nobody out. And waste an opportunity in the fifth. Paul Mahalo mowing them down. One nothing. Bravo.
Michael McHenry behind the plate. Pirates trailing one nothing. This tweet comes in and says, why is the Fort McHenry wearing fingernail polish? Robbie, I know you got the answer. I do have the answer to that. That is because in the beginning of the game, there's a lot of shadows coming from center field, and it's hard for the pitcher sometimes to see what signs they're throwing down, and especially when McHenry is in a tight crouch. So for James McDonald to be uh, have an easier ability to identify uh, what signal is going down, Michael McHenry um, does uh, paints his toenails, and I think they're snap-on nails. Jeff Bannister was saying before the game bench coach that uh, they used to wear whiteout back in his day when he played, but now they're up to press-on nails. That's the reason why. Fingernails, excuse me, I meant to say fingernails, not toenails. Yeah, I, I think a very stylish tone, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Things have gotten better. Manny Sanguin <laughs> used to put taper on his fingers. Yeah. So they went from tape to whiteout, and now uh, stylish, like a uh, high pink. Some of those are just stickers, like you just peel them Peel off the back and put them on there. Yeah, no, I I, I saw Michael to, at a grocery store today. They're they're for real. He wears them all the time. He does, huh? On no, his toes too? Not really. Two balls and two strikes to Evan Gaddis. Sangi had the uh, the tape, and he would tell Nelson Bryce, he said, "Oh, Nelly, you know you don't need to have no signals for me because I don't I don't need to." I don't need to know what's coming. I catch you with my bare hands. Whatever you want to throw, you go ahead. <laughs> Gattis pops it up. Clip Barmos underneath it. One out for it. Pretty impressive, wouldn't you say, when Paul Maham got in a jam, all he does is strike out the side. Yeah, that was some good pitching. That yeah, and it doesn't matter pitcher. whether it's 7, 8, or 9 or not. He, uh, he found a way to just get right out of that gym, uh, jam, Jim. Out of that jam that was emerging. Chris Johnson hit a double in the north side notch. His first time up, reached on fielder's choice. And that's part of the story, too. That that ball, Marte will tell you he should have caught that ball. And that's the only hit that James has given up. We've got a whole lot of pitching going on here. One ball, one strike. The Atlanta run came in the second. Evan Gaddis was hit by a pitch on his left arm. Johnson had the double, so second and third. Then Ugla walked. On ball toward the middle. Walker knocks it down. It's a base hit. The second hit. Johnson is aboard. His second multi hit effort during the course of this series. Easiest way to make sure you get tickets to all your favorite matchups and promotional games is with a Pirates 10 game ticket plan. You can choose from three pre selected plans. Enjoy the year long benefits, including early access to PNC Park, ticket exchange privileges, bonus games. Get your 10 game plan. Call 1 800 buy bucks, or you can also visit pirates.com. 10 game plans make great gifts at Christmas, too. Ramiro Pena, his first at bat. Word on Dan Ugla, he left the game due to a left calf strain. So Pena came in to replace him, and now the switch hitter bats left handed. Facing McDonald for the first time. Pena, 348 in the early part of the year. By the way, to get back to that stolen base information, uh, uh, we were told that uh, after 16 games, there had been 13 attempts last year, 11 of which were successful. So they're successful seven out of nine so far this year. So it really just got a lot of traction and took off after the uh, early games last year when you know, we weren't throwing anybody out. It just escalated. But that's how uh, it started last year, and this is the comparison. Uh, Martin has thrown out two of eight, and Michael McHenry is just 0 for 1. A lot of work put in to hopefully make it better than it was last year. Ball and a strike to Pena. We got activity in the park bullpen as that pitch count uh, has got to be near 100 now for James. 90. Okay. Justin Wilson ready to go. Or getting ready. 
He and uh, Jared Hughes both unavailable for last night's game. Runner goes. This one hit to third. Knocked down by Martin. He goes to first base to pick him up. But Russell Martin with his first chance defensively at third base. And he records the out. Two men out. Johnson saved the second. So, uh, Freddy Gonzalez sent the runner at the correct time and had a chance to be double play. Uh, just like blocking a ball in the dirt. Behind the plate for Russell Martin. Seventeenth time in the big leagues that he has played third base. Ken Hurdle said the other day when I asked the question, would you consider starting Russell Martin? He said, yes, absolutely. And tonight's the night. And starts him at third base. And Francisco takes a strike. He has struck out twice, both times swinging, once in the second inning and once in the fourth. Run on two hits for Atlanta. No runs on two hits for the Pirates. A tightly contested ball game here tonight. McDonald having a good outing, except for the run he walked in in the second inning. Other than that, he's been very good. Paul Mahalam's been excellent tonight for Atlanta. Off to the best start in his career to start a season. You know. There goes Francisco down on strikes for the third time tonight. Braves strand a runner. Mississippi State Bulldogs in the SEC, then making his way after being drafted by the Pirates. The Altoona curve. And a tweet comes in. Did anything change with Paul Mahalam from his time in Pittsburgh to now? Goes from reliable to one of the league's best. Well, right now he is the league's the major league's best. And uh, the only difference I can really see, he's changing speeds more definitively. I mean, there's more of a separation. Uh, and it's strike one. I mean, he's just throwing with a lot of confidence, and he's, he's not only throwing strikes; he's throwing very good strikes. He's he's like Wandy was last night. He's steadying away from the hitting zone part of the strike zone, changing speeds, and he's confident throwing strikes with all his pitches. So, it, it, uh, you know, maybe he's, it, he's some guys mature late. I mean, he's just on a roll now. He's he's out there with uh, a great deal of confidence. He's doing what he wants to do with the baseball. Oh, two to Marte. He's throwing what he wants, where he wants. Well, Marte in his brief career against left handed pitching, hitting 356. This season 328 off to a hot start at a 10 game hitting streak. Well, that was snapped two games ago. 
Trying to start another streak tonight. And you know, 0 for 1. Going back to Mahad, I'll just get in that phrase again, and it's hard to describe. He gets it now. He, okay, I know, I know what it works. I've been here seven or eight years, but now, oh, all right, this, yeah, this is gonna, this is gonna be what it takes. Sometimes it just comes to you. But he, he is changing speeds a lot better, and he's throwing a lot of strikes, and he's throwing all his pitches for strikes. There's a Tabata on deck. He was just going to Atlanta, but he was pitching lights out with the Cubs before that. Yep, that uh, player movement. And he's walked Marte. Second time Marte has been given a free pass. First time he was hit by a pitch. This time he walks. So the leadoff man is aboard. Tabato will try to get him in the scoring position. Good crowd tonight on this Saturday night at PNC Park. Hopefully everybody's. Dressed warmly. I'm guessing well over 25,000. And, and again, I've been preaching it since the second inning. You fall behind Paul Maham, the way he's pitching right now. Get yourself even, and then take your chances. Get one run. All it takes is one run to get even right now. Pitch from Mahal. There goes Marte. The punt is down. Francisco Fields, and he's got Tom at first, but the Pirates with one out now have a man in scoring position, and Andrew McCutcheon coming up. And it will be interesting to see how they pitch against Andrew. Dead and sit on the grass. Forces them to make a decent play to first base because the bone was so perfect. I thought he was at the plate. It's a, a nice likeness of it. Oh. Oh, this one off to the right. McCutcheon doubled to center field off the base of the wall in the fourth inning. And he's also flying out. So one for two of the double. Was seventh double of the year. Let's see how many home runs Paul's given up so far this year. Oh, uh, it'll be yeah, done. Yeah. This will be a uh, good place for the first one. And the Pirates have the time run at second. And McCutcheon goes to right field and deep. This one's going back, and this one is off the top of the wall. Around third is Marte. He scores. McCutcheon with another double, and the Pirates have tied the game. And they have scored the first run off of Paul Mahalo in the 2013 season. Well, somebody was going to do it. Who else to do it but Andrew McCutcheon? On his night, this is Andrew's night. Upstairs, it's a chance to extend those hands, those arms. The short porch and right can work for right hand batters too. So the walk. Hurts, Mr. Mahal. And now Gabby Sanchez with the go-ahead run at second base, facing Mahal. And they're playing right up in back of Andrew. You know he stole third base. They're going to make sure he doesn't do that. Now that there's a one-out situation. McCutcheon now with 12 RBIs to lead the club. Sanchez with five of them. 160 average. Now you've gotten even. Anything's possible, but that just critical. One ball and one strike. Sterling Marte, the leadoff walk, pays off for the Pirates. Took advantage of it. Touching second double drove him in. So a 1 1 game now. Sanchez follows this one off to the right. So it's kind of interesting if you study pitching. A guy that doesn't throw over 90 miles an hour. Is getting a lot of right handers to be late on swings down the right field line. That means 
He's throwing the fastball when they're not expecting it. So it's, it's a it's a late attempt. It's fouled off. So you don't have to be overpowering to get those kind of foul balls. Sanchez hits this one to center field and deep. Upton going back. Still going back. It's gone. A home run for Gabby Sanchez. And the Pirates lead it three to one. How about jump starting a big crowd on a Saturday night? Straight away center field. A lot of carry. A lot of power. And now a pirate lead. Dead center into the shrubbery. Gabby Sanchez comes up with home run number one. Upstairs in that zone. A lot of carry. Beautiful thing. Clint Barma saying wow to Gabby Sanchez. Gabby an all-star in the National League in 2011. He was with the Marlins. Pretty early on. Already looking for a new baseball. One two pitch coming to Martin. You know, we, we talked about the Pirate offense in the last 11 games where they've gone nine, uh, seven and three. No. How can you go seven and three in the last 11 games? Anyway, they've been hitting the ball a lot. The well, the last 11 days, there's 11 10 days. games sorry, in 11, 11 days. You got, 11, you got it right. Yeah. Well, I had the, the, the days wrong. <laughs> But point being, they've had hot bats, and who gets to do the breakthrough against Paul Mahalam? And you know it's going to happen. To the bushes from Sammy Brookover. Three-two pitch to Russell Martin from Paul Mahalam. We'll get another one. Yeah, the. Uh, Usually the conventional wisdom is that when it's cold, that's the advantage. The pitchers like it because you can get on the hands, quote unquote, and all that. But I'll tell you, the ball's been flying. That ball flew. Uh, what about the, the the home runs last night? Flying all over the place. Ouch. Yeah, in game one there were six home runs, four for Atlanta, two for the Pirates. And that hurts whether it's cold or hot. The breakthrough in the sixth. Three two is in the dirt. Another walk. So a struggling sixth inning as somebody in the major league breaks through against Mahala. They'll come out and have a chat as they get busy in the bullpen. Saw Gearin last night. Corey Gearin. And I get Neil Walker. What a perfect punt Neil put down last time up. Just a perfect little push punt. We're in the no man's land. Beat it out. Two run home run by Gabby Sanchez. RBI double by Andrew McCutcheon this inning. And the Pirates have gotten a zero off the board, leading three to one. One out, one on. And also Martin wants to do a little gardening out by first base. Just to clear the track in case he's going to run. I was going to say, now that's not an automatic indication he's going to take off. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't go that far. No. Throw to first, and Paul just in case decided to throw over. But you know what? The, the interesting thing is, you're kind of in the bonus round here in the sixth inning. So you know, it, uh, it it would be a nice kind of a surprise move if they decide to go in that direction. 
It seems like a lot of damage. <laughs> but it's just three runs. But now, you know, the funny thing is now the Pirates pick up the three spot in the six. Makes James McDonald look a lot better too, doesn't it? He was trailing one to nothing. Now he's pitching a real fine game, and he's up three to one. The whole psychological perception of a turnaround here in the sixth inning. Tony Watson getting loose for the Pirates. Nothing in two to Walker. Neil waits for it, rounds it to short. Simmons to Pena for one, back to first. And that's a double play, but the Pirates strike for three runs, and the big blow off the bat of Gabby Sanchez. He goes dead central, and the Bucks up. Yet this season, coming in three and zero, oh, having not given up a run, but the Pirates in the sixth inning got to him for three, and James McDonald done for the night. Six innings, two hits, one earned run. He walked four, hit a man, and struck out nine. Ninety-four pitches, so that'll make way for the left-hander Tony Watson to take over for him. Nice bounce back start for James. Let's beat it. Root Sports Pit hashtag Bucks Booth. James chance to win when. He's pitched so brilliantly tonight, so the Pirates give him a chance, and now they've got a two-run lead starting the seventh inning. And Andrelton Simmons, the shortstop, will face Tony Watson. And that'll be all for Paul Mahalam as Reed Johnson is in the on-deck circle already. Pitch to Simmons. It's inside for a ball. Simmons 0 for 1 with a walk tonight. Pirates and Braves have split the first two games of this four game set. Last night, a 6 0 shutout victory for the Pirates. And a bouncer to short. Barnes right there. One down. Tomorrow, the Bucks battle the Atlanta Braves again. They'll wrap up this four game set. 135 the first pitch. All kids 14 and younger receive a Let's Go Buck. Let's Go Bucks. Eco friendly rally towel thanks to waste management. Come early for the number one Cochran family fun zone on Federal Street. Stay late. Kids get to run the bases after the game for tickets. Pirates.com. It was Reed Johnson last year who was the best pinch hitter in the game. And he takes a strike. Sanchez, his first home run of the season. Good time for the rally towel promo as the Pirates have rallied here in the sixth. Take the lead. 
thing in two. Now, what was it last night? The Reed Johnson pinch hit at bat was 114 pitches. <laughs> it seemed like it, didn't it? Forever. And 113 of them were foul balls. But he's 0 for 6 this year as a pinch hitter. Came over from the Cubs same day Mahalam was traded last year. And McHenry setting up way inside. That's where Watson's pitch went. One and two. One and two to Reed Johnson. One out. Nobody on. Here we go. Foul. Here we go. Oh, ball. See where Sanchez is playing off the line and get a good perspective from that camera angle how much room there is between the line and Gabby for the right hander Johnson. Power straddle. Shade the opposite side of the diamond. Got it. Strike three. Two down in the top half of the seventh inning. Our pitching in double figures with strikeouts tonight. As just a pitch way outside. I guess that's the key to Reed Johnson. Don't throw him strikes. He'll follow them off. J. Upton, 0 for 3, struck out twice, and then was robbed of a home run by Starling Marte in left field. And Upton wasn't the only one who was robbed. There was a kid with a glove right behind Marte, waiting to catch his probably his first home run ball. <laughs> there he is in the striped hat. Held his glove up there, and he came away disappointed. Double barrel action now for Freddy Gonzalez Braves. A couple of right handers warming up. Corey Guerin and Jordan Walden. Guerin on the right, Walden on the left. And this one is a loop to short right field. Sanchez can't make the play. And a base hit for B.J. Upton. And it uh, doesn't look like any big deals. The Pirates have taken the lead, but it's just a two run lead that brings the tying run to home plate. Gabby hit the turn and then made the correct turn, but kind of got himself a little farther away than he wanted to be. Had to reach back. Then you get turned around enough, you don't have the correct angle when the ball comes down. HCH cam gives us a great look. Let's see if Tony can pick him up. Jason Hayward 0 for 2 of the walk. It's an awkward play, but everybody that's involved in a play just like that will tell you that they should have made the catch. A left on left matchup here with Watson against Hayward. Two outs top of the seventh. Pirates up by a pair of runs. Hayward looked a little anxious chasing that pitch down and away. That's a hard pitch to hit when you swing at something that that's far away. I don't think you have a long enough bat. Need a telephone pole to hit that one. Indeed. And the old one. And a bounce of foul. So it's 0 and 2 to Hayward. Runs on four hits for the Pirates, one run on three hits for the Braves. Upton off first, held on by Sanchez, two down. Fort with springs for legs. Yeah, Michael's not that tall. He's going to need a good set of springs and shocks. Fort McHenry. Deals and deals. 
This one in the air to shallow left. Out goes Barmas. In comes Marte. Calls him off. Makes a catch. And Upton is stranded. Stretch time. Middle of the seventh at PNC Park. Pirates up 3 1. Terrific shots from the AGH cam and tonight's AGH sports medicine injury update. Francisco Liriano and Jose Contreras both pitching with Altoona tonight. Liriano two and two thirds gave up four runs and four hits walk three struck out for Contreras. A clean inning with a strikeout. Injury update brought to you by Allegheny sports medicine official medical provider of the Pirates. Liriano and Contreras a couple of veteran guys. On the same path, they both pitched in Bradenton on the same night in single A, now in double A in Altoona tonight. Corey Guerin takes over for Paul Mahalam for Atlanta to pitch in the bottom of the seventh. Well, Mahalam leaves on the hook. That's ball two. Final numbers for Paul six innings, three earned runs on four hits, three walks, five strikeouts. Oh, for two tonight for McHenry. And he is ahead, three balls and no strikes against Corey Guerin. Yeah, let's get some more. This is really not a substantial lead. It's, it's a lead, and it's a good thing. But Let's get some more. Strike. Well, it looks like a real pitcher's duel going on in uh, Houston tonight. So Alvarez has a bat in his hand. You can see Pedro now, the right handers in the game. Pitcher's duel in Houston between Cleveland and the Astros. It's the Indians 18, Astros 6, and they're in the fourth inning. That's a fair ball. And around first and heading for second base is McHenry. He'll be in with a leadoff double. Right on the chalk. McHenry chugging to second base. He won't have to run now except back to the dugout. His night's going to be done. Alex Presley will go out and pinch run. Russell Martin will don the gear. He'll go back behind the plate. You'd think Alvarez would be the third baseman entering late here. Pedro is in the on deck circle with Barmas at the plate. Pitch from Guerin. 
squares and takes a ball. All right, so the chance to add on here in the seventh inning, leading three to one. Yeah, these are the kind of situations when you even add just one run on it seems like three to the other team. It just makes it more uphill for them. One ball and one strike now to Barnes. Barnes had a rough first two months of the season last year. He'll be the first to tell you. He was extremely disappointed in how things went offensively for him in April and May last year, but really turned it on in the second half of the season. Finished around where you think he might. Added a number of key doubles and some extra base hits toward the end of the season. It's a struggling start this year. Trying to get the run of the third. And this one will do it as it goes to the backstop. Now Presley at third base and nobody out. And that changes the at bat for Barmas, who is up there to sacrifice. Now he can try for a sacrifice fly, perhaps. Now that's a pass ball. But you've got a young, inexperienced catcher in Gaddis. It's fine. Wild pitch. All right. That's one of those whatever. He's at third base. The Braves infield is in. And Parmas with a two ball one strike count. Insurance run right there and Alex Presley. And Guerin delivering 2 1. And Barmas swinging a miss. It's not too far away from that last delivery that got away. The previous delivery. Gonzalez and Roger McDowell going into conference. And Barmas with a bad chase there. And he goes down on strikes, one out. Pedro Alvarez swinging a pretty good bat against the Braves. He's homered in each of his last two ball games. That one, a monster shot. Look how high it hits off the batter's eye in center field. And then in the game last night, over the right field seats and almost down under the river walk and into the river. So El Toro is going to get up there and they'll walk him. The right hander to stay in and face the right hand top of the batting order. Starling Martel get to swing the bat. It's the third wide one, three and oh. I guess I, I bet he'll miss. Yeah, he did. He missed again. Well, that's, <laughs> that's a great analysis there, Steve. <laughs> I'm on it. I'm on it. Right on it. So the intentional walk with runners at the corners. And Flash looking for some Joel Cup here. Here we go. The first and third, and one out. Presley at third. Always down at first for Starling Marte. Marte 0 for 1, hit by a pitch, and walk. He's also scored a run. Chases one outside. Garen has that uh, kind of quick sidearm delivery with that big breaking ball. A lot of breaks, like the old roundhouse curveball is to call. I'd probably call on that pitch a slider now. Is that right? Yeah. That was your pitch. Yep. Yeah, but uh, no, that the slider. That, that last pitch, it's he might have called it a slider, but that was not that was not my slider. My slider was a cut fastball. These, these breaking balls, uh, you know, they. Yeah, their choice, curveball, slider. If it works, whatever the name is fine. Marte down to third base. To second for one. 
double play and the Braves escape without giving up a run. Pirates spoil the leadoff double. On to the eight. 3 1 Pirates. and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates. 3-1, top of the eighth. Pirates five hits, Braves with three hits with Bobby Inskowski and Steve Blass. I'm Tim Neverland on a chilly night at PNC Park and the guy who has earned his role as the eighth inning man the setup man Mark Melanson is on now Pedro Alvarez remains in the game at third base Martin moves from third back to catcher and there is Melanson he pitched an inning last night and he has been terrific ten total innings he has given up one run and he has struck out ten and he has not walked a better batter well last night he came in to relief Wandy Rodriguez in the eighth inning and Clint Hurdle saying earlier today that he wanted to stay away from Melanson if possible, but the guys that were coming up were guys that he wanted them to face, and Melanson ended up doing a good job. Got a one, two, three inning, striking out one, faced Gaddis, Johnson, and Ugla. And right here, he will face Upton, Gaddis, and Johnson. Well, Melanson trying to get it done and close the door. And the job of the guys in the bullpen, including the eighth inning man here, the setup guy, is to get the ball to the closer. Right now, Melanson second in the National League in appearances out of the pen with 10 behind the Diamondbacks, Brad Ziegler. Strike one to Justin Upton. With Boston last year, Houston before that. Strike two. ERA under one. Well, Mark, he's been terrific. The speed has been outstanding. Control has been as good or better. Hard to beat not walking anybody in 10 innings. The only pitcher not available tonight is Vin Mazzaro. He's pitched in each of the last two games, so unavailable to go tonight. Pirates will rest him. But, uh, right now, the script is calling for the eighth inning guy, the setup guy, and then right there, Jason Grilly walking into the picture. He would pitch in the ninth. And a poke to right field. An excuse me, single for Justin Upton. Leadoff man is aboard in the eighth inning. Here's a look at the road ahead for the Pirates, brought to you by Nissan. The last game of this four game series against the Braves. It'll be right hander Chris Medlin, who is one and one, going against lefty Jonathan Sanchez. Sanchez 
0 and 2. And Sanchez trying to get that ERA down. After a couple of rough starts. Gave up nine earned runs in a game against the Diamondbacks. Just one of two pitchers in baseball this year to give up nine earned runs or more in a game. The other was Matt Kane of the Giants. Kane gave up a bunch more runs the other day. So he is at a big ERA right now. So Gaddis swings. It's a ground ball to Walker at second base. He'll have one play. It's the first. Gaddis is out. One gone and over to second base is Upton. Now you take the out that's available and uh, it gets you on the other side all that power that Gaddis has. Walker getting the out. Walker wearing the clear glasses. On a breezy, cool night. He does that. He wears contacts. He wears those glasses just to keep the, the dust and wind off the contact lenses. Justin up in the runner at second base and one out. Chris Johnson at the plate. Johnson with two hits in the game. Johnson gets him to swing and miss. Pretty good average so far through almost a month of the season. 426. One of those two home runs came in game one of this series Thursday. Right back to Melanson. They've got Upton back to second base, and Melanson takes the out at first. I thought he was going to go. They they had him. If he makes a decision quickly to go and Get the runner at second base. They get him in a rundown. But once he hesitates, then okay, you got to shut it down because it's not sure anymore. Romero Pena goes 0 for 1. At the point and. Look up there. What a great season. But it's getting get a little late. It's late early around here. Put a lid on this one. Get the pirate win. Get me home where it's warm. It's just missing inside the Pena. Part Pena's 0 for 1. Part of this crowd of 29,313. Big one tonight on Andrew McCutcheon bobblehead night. 45 degrees of game time. It skipped a few cents. 2 0 to Pena. Pena represents the tying run for Atlanta. Melanson delivering the 2 0 pitch. It's 3 0. Melanson trying to come back in this count. Pena came in halfway through the ball game, or a little earlier in the ball game, for Dan Ugla, who left with a left calf strain. Pena replaced him at second base. Strike call. The three one. A little dribbler that'll be taken by Melanson. And another scoreless inning for Mark Melanson. Pirates coming to bat in the bottom of the eighth.
field, but they may have even had a better night off the field tonight. Last night, they uh, said that they would contribute the proceeds to the 50-50 from the Pirates Charities to uh, the OneFundBoston.org. And look at the sales tonight. $17,165. Half of that goes to the winner of the 50-50, and the other half goes to the uh, charity in Boston. $8,582.50 is what is headed there, and that, the proceeds in that amount of money goes to benefit victims affected by the tragedies in Boston this week. So a very good night here in Pittsburgh all around, Tim. Yep. Way to go, Pittsburgh. It's a nice job. Did you get a ticket tonight? I did not. I did not. Bucks and pucks today on Root Sports. Tabata hits one in the air to right field. Hayward backs up, makes the catch, one gone. Jordan Walden. We saw him for an inning and a third, or one third of an inning last night. Sixth inning was the big inning. McCutcheon going the other way, high off the Clemente wall. And that got the first run in as Starling Marte scored, and then Gabby Sanchez. Puts it in the bushes. Two run shot. And erases the one nothing lead. Makes it a 3 1 game. DeMarte tied it up. Two run homer by Sanchez. RBI is 6 and 7 for Gabby. Kutch with his 12th RBI tonight. Two doubles for Kutch. And uh, makes Nick Leva almost have to do the limbo in the third base coach's box. Still quick as a cat. Yep. Nick, steely gray eyes, cat like movements. Steely gray eyes. Steel City. <laughs> Always Italian, somehow. <laughs> Nick, good baseball man. A lot of years. A lot of good years for our third base coach. 1 1 to McCutcheon. Takes outside two and one. Man, Nick was a you could write former a book, manager of the Phillies. Yep. Anybody that's managed in Philadelphia could write a book. Up in the air to left field. Justin Upton will make the catch. Two men are out. Don't miss a special edition of Inside Pirates Baseball featuring former Pirate player and current hitting coach Jay Bell. Once at Allegheny Center overlooking Three Rivers Stadium, Bell now lives in downtown overlooking PNC Park, and much has changed in those 17 years. Inside Pirates Baseball, Jay Bell, then and now, presented by Allegheny Sports Medicine, debuts Tuesday, 10.30 on Route Sports. The offense has really picked up under... Jay the last couple of weeks. It's almost grilling time for the grill master, Jason Grilly. And, and Jay Bell's so good that he won't waste offense to it. Probably figure he's going to take three tonight, so yeah, you don't want to waste it. Gabby Sanchez batting with two outs and the base is empty, takes a strike. Yeah, we had a thought of pulling the trigger on that, but stopped himself. Nothing in two. You know, the pitching rich Atlanta Braves come into town and they win the first game, but boy, the Pirate starters last night, tonight, pretty darn impressive. Base hit for Sanchez. Two for four tonight for Gabby as he ropes a two out single to right field. Pretty nice deal when you as a manager, Clint Hurdle in this case. Uh, can change his first baseman and Garrett Jones has been getting the job done and tonight he goes with Gabby Sanchez and Gabby Sanchez gets the job done. Nice. Here go, Clint. You write the names down then you hope they perform. Gabby certainly has tonight. Well, so Martin the base hit. Martin's one for two with a pair of walks. So back to back two out singles for the Pirates. A little something going with Neil Walker coming to the plate. Nice to see the bat of Russell Martin getting going. Yep. Yeah, the tough start. Start of the year 0 for 17. 
Had a rough road trip to L.A. and Arizona, and then after that, things have really picked up for him. And this surge has, has been kind of spread out, so everybody kind of getting invited to the, to the offensive party here in recent games. That's nice. Well, Walker gets to turn around and bat left-handed now. He's been batting right-handed against Mahalam, and, and he had a little trouble. Except for the bunt base hit, get into a double play and struck out. But Neil's still one for three tonight. And you're doing this against one of the best pitching staffs in all of baseball. Starting pitchers and bullpen combined. Pirates holding their own. Looking for three more outs to guarantee a split. You, you, you know, you got a team that came in. What were they? 13 and two. Yeah, they came in. And uh, hadn't lost a road game until last night. You uh, stand up tall and you hold your own against uh, that kind of surging team. It's not done, it's not done deal yet. But get three more outs, put yourself in a really good position for tomorrow's game. Two strikes to Walker. Derek Jones on deck. One ball, two strikes to Walker. Two on, two out. Sanchez at second and Russell Martin at first. Gattis blocks it. Count is even two and two. Well, the pitching has been so good. If you wanted to beat the Braves, you've know, you got to really shut them down. Well, they are 13 and three, Steve. All three losses, they've been shut out. Yep. You got just one run tonight. So you got to outpitch them. Works at least a lot of teams. Two two to Walker. He struck him out. Well, it's grilling time as Jason Grilly will come on. He'll look for his sixth save of the year. NCAA tournament to defeat Cincinnati and send the Mountaineers to the Sweet 16. We live this bracket busting classic on our next Sunday Night Classics. Boise buzzer beater tomorrow at 8 on Root Sports. Be a good one. What a good one here tonight. 3 1 Pirates. And Jason Grilly is on the hill, the Pirates closer. And they're hoping to raise that. And this one is said and done. Three outs away from defeating the Braves, two of the first three games. His uh, sixth save, should he get it tonight? Number five came exactly a week ago. Well, really ready to go. And he will face Juan Francisco, Andrelton Simmons. 
And the nine hitter. So seven, eight, nine do up for the Braves in the top of the ninth inning. The sixth inning was the one for the Pirates when they got to Paul Mahalam scoring three at an RBI double by McCutcheon, a two run homer by Gabby Sanchez. Now Jason Grilly trying to close it out. Ball one to Francisco, who has taken the collar so far tonight. He has struck out three times. Is inside. Two balls and no strikes. Really, who always looks down and peers up to get his sign, agrees with Russell Martin. He's set 2 0. Uh, back. I think when, when I look at it, Jason really uh, he's off to a great start. He, he's a very excitable guy, and I, I think he's at his best when he. Contains that because it's that's a positive part of him. And uh, just as long as he doesn't let that 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 excitement and that energy bubble over, just as long as it's contained, contained, contained aggression, yeah. along with a real good high fastball. Yeah, that doesn't hurt either. <laughs> well, trying to get hyped here at PNC Park as the Buckos on the verge of beating the Braves here, but. Three outs to go. Two balls, two strikes to Juan Francisco. Francisco just got a piece of it. Yeah. Stayed with that breaking ball, that slider. Pretty good job of staying alive by Francisco. High heat and then low breaking ball. Middleton Simmons, the shortstop in the on deck circle. Braves with four hits tonight. James McDonald started this one, left after six. He struck out nine. Gave up one earned run on two hits. Got him. Strike three. Francisco now wearing the golden sombrero. He has struck out four times. High heat. So it was high heat, then down low with the breaking ball and back upstairs. Changing that sight line. From low to high and high to low, back and forth. Simmons is 0 for 2 with a walk. And he stood him up with a breaking ball for strike one. They downplay that second pitch, but it's so so good as as a strike on its own or set up the fastball. Pitch outside for a ball. It's one and one. And go back to back with a breaking ball, and the hitter knows that somewhere lurking is that real good fastball. He's yet to see it. Probably shook off the first one. There it is. There it is. Cheese at the knees. One and two. Jason Grilly. Facing Andrelton Simmons. One out in the ninth. Hey, struck him out. Jason Grilly has struck out the first two Braves in the ninth. One out to go. Here's that so-called second pitch, which is the breaking ball. Swing starts a little bit early, perhaps thinking fastball is coming, and now he's trapped in the swinging of the bad pitch. Now Freddy Gonzalez. Goes with a left handed bat off the bench. Jordan Schaefer, an outfielder. He is the last hope for the Braves. And Gurley deals him a strike. A 
Nothing and one to Jordan Schaefer. Tried to bunt his way on, and that's strike two. Just incite the crowd. One pitch away. So now Grilly looking for his put away pitch. And to end this ball game. Melting some cheese. Grilly has struck out the first two men on the ninth. Strikes out the side. And the ball game is over. Jason Grilly, six for six and save opportunities. He saves it for James McDonald. McCutcheon with a pair of doubles and an RBI tonight. Gabby Sanchez hits the two run homer in the sixth inning. And the Pirates go above 500 to nine and eight and take two of the first three. They've now won six of their last eight. And how about the bookends on this ball game? James McDonald comes out and strikes out the side in the first. Really comes into the ball game in the ninth and strikes out the side to end the ball game. Nice start, nice finish, nice win for the Bucks. Pirates win it three to one. Let's go down to Rob King and Kent DeCovey.